Hi, and welcome to EV charging and electrical capacity explained for strata apartment buildings. So today we're just going to go over the 101 of what to think about in terms of capacity inside your strata apartment building as we move towards electric vehicles. So the load capacity refers to the maximum electric load that the circuits can carry. On the left, we've got some examples of circuits and what a safe wattage is on those circuits. For old strata buildings, the electrical load for the common area might be 100 amps per phase, three phase. Uh, the important point is the maximum load should not exceed 80% of the capacity of the circuit. According to the Australian standards, 3002.2.2, there are four ways to measure the maximum load in a building. It can be calculated in accordance with the guidance given in the table on the right-hand side. The assessment uh, may be conducted where the load operates under fluctuating or intermittent load constraints or a definite duty cycle. And a couple of things that we take into consideration, the maximum demand may be determined by the highest rate of consumption of electricity recorded or sustained over any 15-minute period or periods when demand is at its highest by a maximum demand indicator or recorder. And the maximum demand may be determined by the current rating of a, of a fixed setting circuit breaker or by the load setting of an adjustable circuit breaker. So just to recap on some of the fundamental electrical concepts of amperage, voltage and wattage. So amps is short for amperes. It's the amount of electrical charge flowing through a point every second. Volts is the unit for voltage. And that's basically um, the, the amount of pressure that's pushing the electric flow through the circuit. And watts is the unit for wattage. That's the amount of electrical power in a system. The electrical capacity of an electrical board is usually measured in amps. And you can find this by looking on the side of the service fuses or the main circuit breaker in the main switch room. So in the photo here, you can see there are 300 amp uh, fuses. And then if we applied a safety factor of 20%, you'd have, a uh, say, a peak capacity going through those uh, fuses of 80 amps. The, uh, the next thing that we have to look at in terms of electric vehicle charging is there's two types of current. There's alternating current and direct current, AC or DC. Now, most household appliances are powered by AC, and most of the EV charge stations that are out there at the moment are charged using AC charging. Uh, but there are fast DC chargers available and uh, DC fast charging is usually used more in shopping centers or on roadside charging stations for faster charging. Another concept we've just got to cover off on is converting amps to kilowatt. The charging speed of an EV charger is generally expressed in amps. For example, 16 amps or 32 amps. However, electrical powers measured in kilowatts. A lot of the time you have people speaking both of these terms and here are the equations, quite simple, that allow you to convert from amps to kilowatts or vice versa. PF stands for power factor. And uh, in a building, a modern building, that's usually between 0.95 and 1.00. Older buildings, it might be 0.8 or 0.9. Some really bad buildings might have a power factor of 0.6. And if you do, you should be doing something about it. So back to the formulas, the AC single phase kilowatts equals the power factor times the amps times the voltage divided by 1000. And for AC three phase, the kilowatts equals three times the power factor, times the amps, times the voltage divided by 1000. And we've got a simple work solution here. And you can see the rated uh, power output of being 7.36 kilowatts, assuming that this building's operating at a power factor of one. So electricity metering data, we've got three different types of electricity meters. On the left, we've got the analog meter, the oldest, uh, which is getting phased out. The interval meters in the uh, middle, uh, quite common in our strata buildings, and then the smart meters on the right, what we should all be working towards uh, over the next couple of years. Electricity metering data allows you to identify the peak demand. If we graph electricity metering data that comes in, say, 30-minute intervals, you can see on this graph here, there's two peak demand points that are at 14 kilowatts, and they appear 
at 8 a.m. and uh, just after 5 p.m. We can tell the peak capacity is 64 amps. So what's an electrical single line diagram? Ideally, every strata building would still have the original electrical single line diagram from when the building was constructed. If you're not a relatively new building built in the last five or so years, there's a good chance that this diagram has been lost or it was never actually created in the first place for some really old buildings uh, built back in the 60s and the 70s. The single line diagrams, a simplified notation for representing three-phase power system, and you can follow the circuits and see what the amps are on different circuits. And you can see it branching off to show the common area circuits and the apartment circuits. So here's an example of a single line diagram and there's 630 amps capacity on the common area. Then the next thing to have a look at is three phase versus single phase power supply. So individual apartments are usually served by a single phase power supply, while the common areas usually has a three phase power supply. Some much older apartment buildings from the 60s might only have a single phase uh, power supply for the common areas. A three phase power supply is better for accommodating higher loads and uh, single phase is things like uh, lighting or heating. So you can identify what type of power supply you have based on the circuit breaker installed. On the left is a three phase circuit breaker and on the right is a single phase circuit breaker. Now, if we look at the, uh, the common services inside a strata building, usually you've got your main switchboard and this is divided into two main sub circuits. One's the non-essential services and that can include you know, building facilities such as um, lighting, cooling towers, water pumps, ventilation. And the other is for essential services, which includes fire control, sprinkler booster pumps, ventilation fans for car park and fire stairs, lifts, hydrant booster pumps, all the things that you want to operate. If there's any issue in the building, they are the essential services. And so you'll have distribution boards for both non-essential and essential services coming off the common services circuit. And then the next concept we're just going to cover is you sometimes need new distribution boards dedicated to EV charging. Here you can see line one, line two, line three, and neutral or earth. And here's an example of single phase apartment meter uh, coming off one of the phases, in this case, L1, and a three phase common area meter are coming off the three different phases, L1, L2, and L3. New distribution boards for dedicated for EV charging can be spawned off the common area uh, circuits that come out of the common area meter. And these can be installed in the car park area uh, if you don't already have them there. And then after the distribution boards are installed in the car park, then the EV charges can be connected to the corresponding EV distribution board. So hope you've enjoyed this um, quick overview and background on some of the basic concepts around looking at capacity for electric vehicle charging in our strata apartment buildings. Thank you. Mm -hmm.